Hello YouTube. <laughs> Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing my mid-June wrap-up. So you might have seen in my last video that I decided to have wine and guacamole for dinner because that was the day I was having. Guess what guys? It's wine and guacamole again, but I'm just doing it right out the bottle. This is me now. This is how I live my life. Just wine and guacamole. <laughs> But anyway, I'm not trying to be an emotional wreck in this video, so let's just talk about some books I read recently because you know what? Even if I'm having a terrible day or I'm just not having good mental health for whatever reason, I still really like reading. In fact, I love reading so much that I have read nine books so far in June. It is an intense amount of books. Well, it's like eight and a half, but I'll, I'll get into that. <laughs> And they're all different genres and and you know what um i didn't do it on purpose but like so many of the books i picked were lgbtq plus related and it's pride month and i was like this is a happy accident awesome <laughs> i think i'm gonna start off with the books i loved and then kind of move on down the road to the books i liked and then the the, the half book we'll get into <laughs> All right, first category is five star picks. I usually do this by genre, but today I'm just doing it about how much I liked them. First things first, let's talk about In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This was not originally on my TBR list, but it came in the mail and Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany, she's a friend of mine, she was raving about this book so much, in fact, that I pre-ordered it. As soon as I got here, I was like, all right, let's see what this is about. And you know what? Oh my gosh, I love it, I'm in love with it, I'm obsessed, five stars. It's about a pansexual blood mage named Rovin, and uh, she could do blood magic, and then there's also death magic in this world, and she has uh, like two love interests. It's sort of a thruple. So she really, really likes the princess, Lydia, and she also has a thing with Ivrilos, who's kind of like her, her ghost companion. Yeah, they have ghosts, and they get like attached to blood mages, and it's like a whole thing. There's like a lot going on here. There's something rotten in the state of Denmark, there's corruption, and so it's up to Rovin, our pansexual blood mage extraordinaire, to kind of start a rebellion amongst both the living and the dead to save the day, save the world from literally dying. So there's a lot of things to love about the book. First things first, concept, A+. Second thing, Rovin, very prickly heroine. Um, honestly, kind of an asshole, but like strangely still lovable. Um, very funny, very sarcastic, but like, let's be real, bit of an asshole. <laughs> There's some moments in here that are incredibly funny. There's some swoony moments. There's a lot of like really, um, I guess you could say body horror moments because there's some gore happening. Um, it, it's just got everything I want and I really, really like the writing style. This isn't a debut, but it's the first book I've read by this author and it made me want to go buy more books from this author and read them because it was a ball. If I have to give criticism, I would say that I don't I felt like the book needed to be maybe just a bit longer because a lot of things were kind of rushed and maybe underdeveloped a bit. Um, I think maybe this had like 50 more pages just to let things like ruminate a bit. I feel like it would have been a bit more poignant. Uh, so yeah, I, it could have had a little bit more going on, but as it is, I had a ball. I loved it. I devoured this. It was so fun. And then I have these two historical romances that both super surprised me. First things first, I have Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. This is a fan favorite. A lot of people in my comment sections have been telling me to read this for years. So I was like, all right, you know what? June 2021, this is the year. <laughs> so I started reading this and I was like, okay, okay. Like I'm seeing it. And then things take a turn you don't expect. And honestly, I love it. I. I, it, it, okay, I'll explain. <laughs> it's kind of made out of a lot of tropes that I don't genuinely like, but it works so well. So this is Sebastian and Jessica. Sebastian is like, you know, um, he, he's a scoundrel. He's like this Marquess who's like the bane of the Marquesses. He's like a bad guy. And then there's Jessica who's, who's stupid, brother. Like this guy is so dumb. Insert dumb brother joke here, that dumb. And he gets like roped into the Marquess's schemes and he's like just ruining himself and doesn't know any better. And Jessica's like, listen, bruh, you need to lay off my brother or else. And he's just like, or else. And she's like, uh-huh. And he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> so it's one of those situations where you have like a, a hero who's like genuinely 
not a nice person. Like it is coming from like a place of like childhood trauma and like loneliness and all that. So he obviously has some issues to work out, but he's genuinely like an asshole. But the thing is, Jessica is kind of equally bad to him at points. And she's like, she's the feisty heroine you want that you don't ever get where you have these feisty heroines. And then when they're in a relationship, they just kind of turn into like, blubbering mess crying in a house dress over a man and you're like why what what happened to all your feistiness and like jessica never loses her feistiness she's like oh that's how you want to play it let's play that way like <laughs> she's, she's just diabolical and i love her <laughs> they're both kind of equally terrible to each other but it's oddly very satisfying when their romance works out and it's kind of it's not really like a Beauty and the Beast situation. It's it's kind of has that vibe, but it's not. It's more of like um like like the like the Marquess is just like a feral cat that's been burned before. So every time you try to be kind to it, it just claws you. And Jessica just won't deal with it. She's like, no no no. If you're gonna claw me, I'll claw you right back, bitch. <laughs> So um, yeah, it surprised me how much I enjoyed this. It was so fun. I love the banter. And I also, okay, little side note here. Um, the character Sebastian is also referred to many times in this book as kind of being like goofy looking. Like he's not like, oh, hello, I'm a Marquess. I'm devastatingly handsome. <laughs> no, he shows up and like, He's kind of goofy looking, like a lot of people remark on this throughout the book. It was kind of a new, fresh change, considering this came out like 20 years ago, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. The other historical that I read and absolutely adored is Her Wicked Marquess by Stacey Reed. I got this like several months ago from like the publicist for this book and I hadn't read it till now and I felt bad. And I finally picked it up and oh my gosh, is this really good. Like I emailed the publicist out of nowhere and I'm like, hi, we haven't talked in a few months, but oh my gosh, I love it. I'm in love with it. I'm obsessed. If you ever do something with this author again, please send me things. <laughs> I loved it so much that this is the second book of this series. I went out and I bought the first book and I pre-ordered the next book. Like that's how much I love this. I'm obsessed. This is Marianne and Nicholas. Um, Marianne is kind of a spinster and she's been engaged to this guy who's like a real scumbag. She does not want to marry him. He's also old enough to be her father. So like there's problems. In comes Nicholas. He is very much, you know, um, wicked Marquess. Another Marquess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he is just like, um, has the, the rakish persona around town and, uh, you know, the, the reprobate. And she needs to get out of this engagement. So she's like, I need to ruin myself. Um, I'm gonna start a rumor. So she starts this rumor that Nicholas was seen sneaking out of her bedroom window and they kissed. So she starts spreading that rumor around and Nicholas is like, oh really? <laughs> I mean, Nicholas has his own reasons to be intrigued by this and go along with it. And here's why I like this so much. It, not only is it like, it's a little bit broody, it's a little bit feisty, has really great banter, it's historical romance, it's steamy, it's got some smut, mm. and it also has like this big sprinkling of Count of Monte Cristo vibes. What? Did you hear that right? Yes, you did. It's a historical romance with steam and also Count of Monte Cristo revenge plots. <laughs> I was not expecting the Count of Monte Cristo to be in this and I am excited about it. <laughs> So Nicholas, he is like on this long-term revenge quest and he's like, oh, I need to avenge this wrong that has been done to someone I loved. And here's one thing about Nicholas. Again, another refreshing thing about a hero. He Does he have the persona of like the rakish reprobate? Yes, he does. Is he one? No, actually he doesn't. You don't see him sleep around ever. Like he has, he's slept with women, yes, but he doesn't sleep around. He doesn't actually drink to drunkenness. Like he just has that like persona, but he actually doesn't do that. So I'm like, wow, a hero that doesn't like go whore around all the time. I love it. <laughs> also, I really love their relationship. It's kind of built on this foundation of trust and friendship. They actually just form this really cool friendship where he sneaks into her room every night and they just like talk and like play charades. It's like, that sounds doofusy, but like, it's really cute actually. And then you have all of the like, you know, revenge plot and like dark moody stuff, but oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Historical romance, steam, Count of Monte Cristo, five stars. Next category is sci-fi and I have two of them and uh, I liked one more than the other, but they're both good. 
I picked up Hard Reboot by Django Wexler, and this was sent to me by the publisher. Thank you, Tor, for sending it to me. And it's a little novella, and we're following this woman, Kaz, and she's kind of on Earth. Um, I mean, that doesn't sound like anything, but in this, this is far in the future where humans have colonized other planets. They also live in space. So Earth is kind of like a trash heap you know, study abroad type of situation. She's on Earth, she's doing her thing, and then she kind of gets like conned into betting a lot of money she doesn't have on this robot fight and loses a lot of money. So enter Xi, the woman who conned her out of this money, who is a, a battle robot pilot, and then now they're in it together because, uh-oh, she owes money to a lot of people, she just lost a lot of money, she just stole a lot of Kaz's money, so um, they have problems. <laughs> and, you know, the way they're gonna solve it is like fixing up this old robot so they can, you know, have a big battle with it and win all the money. And also there's flirting and like they get together and it's like, kind of a fun romance because they have so like such different cultural backgrounds where Kaz has grown up in space where things are very formal and uh Xi has grown up on earth and she's just like if you want to make out with someone you just go make out with them and that doesn't like resonate to Kaz there's a lot of sexual tension here but essentially it's about robot battles and it's like action-packed and it's really fun the only criticism I have here is that oh my gosh I wish this was a whole length novel it's only like a little over a hundred pages like how many pages is this yeah it's like 147 pages so it's not super long and I really would have read a 300 page version of this it has so much potential so much space to grow and like really get invested in these characters more so than I did but overall it was like a fun time like it's kind of like watching a movie you know what I mean where they cut out a lot of things but it's like a good 90 minutes this overall I get like 4.5 stars because genuinely I wish there was more to it it was a really fun story I also read we could be heroes by Mike Chen and this is the book that I had no expectations going into. I just kind of got it randomly for book of the month. It's sci-fi, it's superheroes. We're following Jamie and Zoe. They both um, woke up one morning with no memories and also superpowers. So there's something afoot here. <laughs> and you know, their lives go on and then eventually their paths cross each other. Uh, Jamie has kind of become a super villain who, who robs banks to buy cat food for his cat. And he's like kind of a nice guy actually, but also a super villain accidentally and then Zoe is running around being a literal superhero beating up you know bad guys just doing her thing vigilante and of course their paths cross because you know super villain superhero obviously they're gonna get tangled in the same things but what happens is that they actually end up having like a yin-yang situation where like a lot of Jamie's like mellowness and a lot of Zoe's like high strung like balance out so they actually have a really cute friendship with each other and also there's a lot of mystery here how did they get these abilities why can't they have any memories before two years ago what is going on so they kind of team up to go down the rabbit hole and see what's at the bottom what caused this like what's going on what's the secret so yeah that, that's basically it that's the whole plot here but i really really liked it it's kind of fun just seeing like people getting superpowers and not necessarily doing something real cool with them like <laughs> jamie's like well i need to buy cat food i guess i'll rob a bank la 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 and <laughs> it's just like silly things and uh it, it's like a fun play on the superhero genre and overall i think like it had a bit of there's some points in the plot that i felt were a bit threadbare but Overall, I thought it was really fun. I thought it would be like a good mini series or movie, honestly. It's very cinematic in its approach. And I had a lot of fun with it. I gave it like 4.25 stars. It's really good. Next category, this was just like some books. Like I liked them. I wasn't necessarily amazed by them, but I liked them. I read Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I believe this is the debut. It's one of those books I just saw on Book of the Month and I was like, oh, this cover? Tell me more. <laughs> It's basically a reimagining of the Ariadne myth, which is pretty messed up when you read it. You know, you have Ariadne, um, her family, her brother is the Minotaur. And um, every year these people get sacrificed to it. And one year Theseus shows up and he's like a dream boat. And so he's like, I don't want you to get killed. So here's like string so you can find your way out of the labyrinth. And he's like, K. Okay. And then in the historical myth and also, you know, they're gonna do it in here too. Um, Theseus also famously goes to an island, drops her off, and fucking leaves. He just 
leaves her on an island to die. <laughs> and they leave it in the book. And Theseus is just like a real fucking fragile man. He's the worst. And Ariadne then kind of gets with Dionysus. And they have their whole thing. So like, she's like, you know what? I leveled up, okay? I got a god husband. <laughs> And I know this sounds like spoilers, but I'm like, this is just what the myth is. You could just Google the myth and that's what it is. And this is what the book is. But it's kind of taking it from a more of a perspective of Ariadne and her sister and their bond and kind of putting more humanity into their stories because a lot of times they're just like, these placeholders and archetypes of women and like let's be real the greek classics are just buckets of misogyny so it's kind of like picking that apart and seeing what is their life actually like like are you so miserable that like this is how you have to survive or are you unsatisfied in your marriage and you never thought about it anymore so i feel like it would like resonate with modern women as well there's like a lot of things happening here that i still feel have like emotional resonance today like i feel like people could probably place themselves in their positions but overall was i obsessed with this no i had a good time reading it uh i gave it four stars because there's nothing really wrong with it it's just not something that i was like obsessed with it was fun though and i i saw i know what it was doing and i think it did it well it just like wasn't like completely my taste i also read arsenic and adobo by mia P. Manansala, and this was my first cozy mystery. I've never read one before, and I'm like, okay, this was fun. <laughs> We're following Lila. She is a 20-something a, a woman, kind of down her luck. She moves back home with her family. She's helping her, her tita run her restaurant, and it's, it's a Filipino restaurant, and she's that's what she's doing. So one day, Ag's boyfriend shows up the restaurant, he eats all his food, and then pff, drops down dead. <laughs> so of course everybody thinks it was Lila because like there's there's motive there and then like things just go awry and it ends up being this like huge like mystery crime drama with like drug deals and like murder and all kinds of shit so like it took a turn However, was I like oddly comforted by like the family in this book and like their vibes, all of the Filipino food? Totally. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just where I was growing up in Los Angeles. Uh, there's just a like, really huge Filipino community. So like I grew up with most of my friends being Filipino. So it just reminded me of going over to their like house after school and like learning bits of Tagalog so I can ask their grandmas to make us food. <laughs> That's what I did a lot. I was a kid obsessed with pancit noodles. So there's just something very comforting about people speaking Tagalog and all the and all the Filipino food and also murder mysteries. So I, I don't know. I feel like this is like a comfort read for me. And also it's like, it's a pretty twisty, turny mystery, honestly. So it was fun. I gave it four stars. I thought I was doing something good. Was it extraordinary? Like, I got, no, but it was fun and I enjoyed it. Last section is kind of disappointments one more low-key than the other i read how to find a princess by Alyssa cole this is the next book in the runaway royal series and oh boy was i looking forward to this i pre-ordered the shit out of this i was like yes ff romance and it's like runaway princess and like schemes and like oh, spies and i was like yeah i was freaking out about this and i i read it and you know what spoiler alert three stars. Like, I thought it was pretty average, honestly. Like, I was not impressed. So this is Makeda and Besnaria. Makeda is, uh, she's a young woman. She is kind of, uh, habitually a people pleaser. So, you know, she has some things she needs to work out in her own life. And one of these is that her grandma has this big story about how when she was a young woman, ooh, she banged a prince one summer. <laughs> So they're like, hey, you know, you're like a lost princess, right? And she thinks it's bullshit, but like maybe not. And so Besnaria shows up and she's like, hi, I work for the Federations of Monarchists and I'm a spy. And like, I think you're a princess. You need to go to this country with me. And then like, you know, whirlwind of like trying to get her on this boat to go to this country. And, and there's also like 
things that are like fishy going on and like they have to solve a mystery and it's like spy drama and FF romance and all of that kind of stuff. Which in theory sounds awesome. In execution, it was really just kind of lackluster. Was there a lot of cool like bits where Besnaria needed to be like a bodyguard maybe? Or action? And like no, there is none of it. And I'm like, why Why have her be like this martial artist if she's not going to do anything with it? I'm really just bananas curious why that was in there. And also their romance is slow burn. Like it's so slow, it's glacial, frankly. Like it is glacially slow. Um, I don't even think they like make out until like probably at least 70% of the way through the book. It's like glacial. <laughs> And then the whole big conclusion of the book just wraps up in like one chapter and you're like, what? <laughs> so there's pacing issues here. It was, there was like missed opportunities for like action and it was just overall kind of meh. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's it. Three stars. It was average. It was like, meh. It's fine, I guess. Now this last book, I DNF'd and it also hurts my feelings the most. I DNF'd Persephone Station by Stina Leaked. And here's the thing, I was talking this book up. I was like, have you seen this cover? Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> so I'm like, it's so pretty and so dumb and I'm so upset. And honestly, I only read like a little over a hundred pages of this and I, I read all of the words on all of the pages and I had no idea what was happening. Like, I'm like, is it me? Is it my ADHD? Can I not focus? Do I need to start from the beginning again? And then I was like, let's check a review. I don't think it's me. And then, oh boy, was it not me? <laughs> so many reviews, just like, what the fuck is even happening? Like so many people DNF because you're like, I read all of the words and I don't know what happened. And I'm like, girl, same. <laughs> so again, in theory, this sounds amazing. It's kind of like a space Western, has Mandalorian vibes. We're following Rosie, who is this proprietor of like, you know, the cantina. And there's like a Chris criminal underbelly and there's like a corporation coming and like they're gonna have to fight. So like, that's like the basic bones plot. Another aspect like the entire main cast is either female, queer, or both. So like already I'm like yes loving all of that. The cover, the theory, like the concept, the cast, love all of that. It has a lot of really good ideas but like it's just unintelligibly written. Like it it's not just me. <laughs> I I read a hundred pages and like I couldn't tell you a thing that happened. I really couldn't. Someone got through out of a window once and I think there was a sex robot. Like I I don't know what happened. I read a hundred whole pages so at this point and then I checked all the reviews I'm like I don't think I'm gonna figure out what's going on. <laughs> I'm just gonna read all these words and just have a brain full of gopher holes again. And I couldn't do that to myself. So I gave up and I moved on and it hurts because it's so pretty and it's so stupid. Oh, I'm very disappointed in this. Okay, those are all the books I've read so far in June. A lot of them. I have been a little reading machine, drinking wine, eating guacamole. This is what I do now. Let me know in the comments down below, uh, what have you been reading lately? What's your favorite and your least favorite? Because for me, I mean, I had a bunch of five star reads. Like I was like loving a lot of these books. And then a couple of them, I'm like, Ugh. like, I mean, one of them I genuinely disliked and the other one I was just kind of meh about. But like overall, I mean, out of nine books, that's like a good average. Oh, but one last thing before we go. Hey guys, the live show for the Blazing Bodice Rippers Book of the Month Club will be on my channel on June 26th. It's a Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. It's gonna be really fun. We're reading Deal with the Devil by Kit Roca. It's Mercenary Librarians, it's Urban Fantasy. I'm so excited to read it. And if you guys are wanna come hang out with us, it'll be a lot of fun. We are gonna talk about the book in detail. So if you're sensitive to spoilers, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Read the book, I guess, and then come hang out with us. Or just hang out with us anyway. I don't know. You do you, honeydew. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.